Hey, stay tuned to WSTG TV's YouTube channel. Coming up is the Sear Foundation's kids show, Our Future, hosted by Jamie Jones interviewing ABC 7's Val Warner. Immediately following will be a day in the district, hosted by Chelsea Whittington interviewing the world-renowned Jackson Brothers. Next up, Spotlight on Business, hosted by Chuck Hughes, interviewing Kenny Wama, new chancellor of IU Northwest. Then we'll have Westside Leadership Academy Athletic Department University Commit Press Conference, hosted by Coach Bugs. Lastly, the WSTG Dance Department's Virtual Spring Concert. Listen, don't forget, immediately following each program, you can watch on demand by going to WSTG TV channel on YouTube. We thank you for watching, and thank you for your continued support. Hello, I'm Jamie Jones, and welcome to our Sear Foundation Our Future TV program. We are excited to present someone who has the number one TV show in the Chicagoland area, Miss Val Warner. Ah, thank you so much. No problem. Hi, everyone. This seat is right here. Thank you so much, Jamie. No problem. I'm in the seventh grade, and as the Sear Foundation, we are empowered and taught how to be entrepreneurs, learn money management, investing, and just be ourselves. So, may I ask you a few questions? Absolutely. First of all, can I just say thank you to Asir and for you for hosting me and having me here tonight in your lovely studio audience. No problem. <laughs> so, my first question for you is, why did you decide to become a journalist? Okay, Jamie, thank you for asking me. And it's a little bit of a story, but I'm going to try to tell the condensed version. I grew up in Los Angeles, California. And in L.A., everybody wants to be an actor and an actress, right? It's Hollywood and the distance from South Central Los Angeles, where I grew up on 83rd and Normandy, which is considered the hood. I would see the Hollywood sign off in the distance. So I said, you know what? When I grow up, I want to be an actress. I participated in speech contests at my elementary school. And, you know, I would do humorous monologues and dramatic monologues. And I just felt very comfortable in front of the camera. I grew up in the church, so I was giving, you know, Easter speeches speeches on Easter Sunday and uh, giving the announcements the older I got when I was really little I would do a welcome and you know read scriptures or poems or whatever my father was a minister in church so I spent a lot of time in the church and when you grow up in the church you have a built-in studio audience who's always encouraging and uplifting you and telling you that you can so from an early age I was very comfortable in front of a microphone and a podium so I said you know what and then I like acting. So I said, I'll try my chop said being an actress. That was at my eighth grade graduation. I went to high school and my freshman or sophomore year, I started thinking, do I really want to memorize all those lines? That sounds like a lot of work. So I started to second guess my dreams and aspirations of being an actress. And it was a visit from a veteran news anchor in Los Angeles that came to my high school that made me rethink things. And she did a um, career festival, so to speak, and she spoke to the junior and senior class, and we were in the gym of my high school. And after listening to her talk about her career and what an average day is like being an anchor and starting off as a reporter, it was like an aha moment for me. I was like, that's what I wanna do. Because at the heart of my job, is stories and I love telling stories and I also love hearing stories hearing people's stories so she talked about how no two days are the same how you get the opportunity to give people stories um, and at the same time I'm still in front of an audience I still have the microphone I still have the stage but just in a slightly different format so that is why I decided that that's the what like the reason and the experience that made me shift gears and go I think that's what I want to do so that was my senior year of high school and so I went to UC San Diego but also my senior year of high school we had one of the biggest 
national historic events, which was the Rodney King riots, because I grew up in Los Angeles. So your generation, of course, is knowing the Black Lives Matters movement and the George Floyd protests. So that for me growing up, that was Rodney King. And I was able to walk outside of my door and look to my right and look to my left and see my neighborhood on fire because people were not happy with the verdict that came out that acquitted the officers who beat Rodney King then on a tape. So I took a camcorder, well not I, my mother bought a camcorder that year because I was involved in everything as a senior in high school and she wanted to document. We didn't have cell phones back in my old day. <laughs> we had a good old camcorder, but she, she broke out this camcorder and I sat kind of like how we're sitting, Jamie. We had like a little bref breakfast nook table in the kitchen and I sat in one chair, she sat across and I wrote a script like I was going to be an anchor delivering what was going on in my neighborhood. And she filmed it and then we got in the car and we rode around and I narrated and pretended like I was a reporter actually reporting on the events that were happening in my neighborhood. And that was, I always tell people, is my first un official story because you know I was a high school senior with a big old zit on my nose and crazy looking hair and no fancy clothes or anything but I had the desire to tell this story and to document what was happening so that's how and and why I decided to get into TV and that was back in 1992 wow 1992 you weren't even thought of was even thought of <laughs> so now with that story, I know there was people along the way that made you like, yeah, I want to be a journalist. So uh -huh. who has been your biggest inspiration to becoming a journalist? Okay, well, that woman's name was Pat Harvey, and I don't know if anybody here in this room, some of the parents would know her. She used to be an anchor at Channel 9 here, and she was the woman that moved to California. She's been there ever since. Um, but I have to say, I loved watching Oprah Winfrey. And, you know, it, it's ironic that I would end up doing I never saw me where I am now as a talk show host because I went to school to be a journalist journalists are neutral they tell people the facts you come up with your own conclusions you formulate your own opinions now I'm in a completely different role as a talk show host where I am supposed to tell what I think about a story and I can be biased if I want to versus being unbiased growing up in my uh, career but in college I used to schedule my classes around the two things all my children which was a soap opera <laughs> and the Oprah Winfrey show and I loved the way Oprah interviewed and how comfortable she made people feel and how she was able to tell their stories through questions and allow them to be free to be themselves and tell their stories and uh, that was that was really big for me now did I ever think that I would be doing that kind of format no but I still was able to learn from her interviewing styles how to be a journalist because she too started off in you know TV back in the day before she became Oprah Oprah Winfrey um, so yeah she was a big inspiration for me and then I have to say Allison Payne who was an anchor here in Chicago while I was an anchor in Flint, Michigan, which is the market I was at before coming to Chicago. And I used to watch her in, in, in Flint. I was able to watch Channel 9 News. It was the only station I could get out of Chicago because it was on the super station. So I would come home from work and see what was going on in Chicago and watch Allison Payne. I just thought she was dynamite. She radiated on the screen. She commanded the camera. And so she was a big inspiration to me as well. And then to meet her as an anchor, a young anchor in Flint, Michigan, and to come to Chicago and meet her at a conference and have her hold my hand and help get me here to Chicago. I can never forget that about her. So those would be, I would say, the three ladies who inspired me in this career. That is really interesting. Thank you. My dance instructor at Woodside is pretty tough on me. I don't mind because I know she cares about my education and only wants what's best for me. That's why I enrolled in Gary Community Schools. Not simply to spend hour after hour working on toe pointing, but to be the best. Gary Schools, strong, resilient, built for education. And since I'm younger, as a 12-year-old 7th grader, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to scholars like me who wants to be a journalist like you were younger? 
I would say, now this is something I did not do, Jamie, because if you remember, I said I really wanted to be an actress. So I didn't watch the news when I was in seventh grade like you at 12 years old. I was being a seventh grader, a 12-year-old seventh grader. But I would say if this is something that you're interested in, it doesn't hurt to sit back and watch the news with mom and dad. I know nowadays that you, you, your generation gets the news so differently. You get it through social media. You get it on your phone. And But I like the idea of old school sitting down, even if you just watch 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes of a nightly newscast. Pick your network. They all do them, where they kind of wrap up what's happening across the country, uh, here in our city, maybe globally. But start watching people in your profession. So maybe you don't want to be a journalist. Maybe you want to be something else my advice in general for kids is to watch and study the people who are doing what they aspire to do so for me you know once I got into I said you know this is what I want to do I made a clear decision to start watching the news the first here's another piece of advice and this is the really big piece of advice that I highly recommend for all kids as soon as I got to college I couldn't intern my first year freshman year because you kind of want to get your feet you know solidified on the ground and make sure you know college life but as soon as they allowed me to intern I went straight to the ABC station in Chicago and I spent three years there as an intern so I was able to get college credit but I was also able to gain so much more hands-on experience and knowledge that was so valuable things that I couldn't necessarily learn in a textbook so I implore students all the time if you're considering whatever the career it is dabble in it while you're in college because you may get to that internship let's say you want to be an attorney well you should spend time in a law office you should find out what goes into preparing for a case then maybe go to court you know nowadays of course we're in zoom and everything's happening that way but when the world opens back up go see what that's like because it could either tell you yes this is exactly what i want to do or oh wow no this is not exactly what I thought it was because you get to see people doing it day in and day out so that's the two the two things that I would absolutely say study 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 your craft and that means not necessarily in a book but watch the people who are doing what you want to do and you can get different things from different people and then also to make sure that you do an internship nowadays internships are paid when I was in college back in 1992 to 96 there was no paid internship it was just college credit so now you can get the experience and consider it a job while you're in college yeah i'd definitely be using that advice to become a young actor which is what i want to do okay yeah and see maybe for you you might want to start researching agents you know now because you're gonna have to have the proper representation to make sure that you're getting the right gigs right the right acting parts the speaking part they're gonna know exactly what you're interested in what you're good at what your you know uh, strengths and weaknesses and then that agency and then if you get a big agency or somebody that's reputable then more roles so that's the advice that I would give to you Jamie Thank you so much, because I would definitely be using that. Okay. And so, us young scholars, we watch Disney Channel, yeah. and there's that classic Imagine Womp when the show starts. So, if you were able to just hold it for a couple seconds, what were what are three things you would do just to change the world how it is? Oh, that's a great question. You mature, you don't want to go into talk show hosting? <laughs> like, oh, you're seeing acting now, but you might want to reconsider that. If I had a magic wand... What would I do to change the world right now? Well, I think the probably the most obvious thing that probably any adult or grown up in this room wants is equality. I would want to I would want to do away with racism. I would want to do away with the division that we see in our nation. I would wave that wand and make everybody get along and make everybody listen to each other. It doesn't mean that everybody has to agree on everything, but we've got to get back to well, I don't even know if we got to get back to, but we've got to get to a point where we are respectfully disagreeing that there's not so much hate in this world. So I would wave that wand and I would immediately bring back love and peace and equity I would make sure that women are getting a, my second thing I would wave that wand and make sure that women are getting equal pay and equal chances and equal opportunities women and people of color uh, for jobs that to make sure that they are not being uh, overlooked and to make sure that they are being elevated at the same rate and pace that 
a lot of folks are. And, uh, you know, we want things fair. We want a fair playing field. I would make that instantly happen. Um, I know you said three, but I just thought about a couple more. I would wave that wand and make sure that there is no student loan debt for kids who are trying to go to college <laughs> or who have, or grown ups who've gone to college or paying for their kids college. And the cost of college is a racket. It is so expensive to get a college degree. And now kids are getting these degrees or people like me who have a degree. I don't even remember other only than my internship. I don't remember what I learned in that math class. So I would change that. I would make colleges, college and the, um, the desire to get a degree accessible for all because there are so many people who are deterred because they just can't afford it. So I would do that. And then I would really love to see... Um, if I could wave, finally, I know that was three, but this is my last one. If I could wave that magic wand right now, today, Jamie, I would get rid of COVID-19. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I could clap to that. I would clap to that. I would make it to where nobody is dying from this again, where we can go outside, where we can be safe, where we can get back, people can get their jobs back, restaurants and businesses who have had to shut down because of the economy. I would bring everything back to vibrancy. That's what I would do right now. I like I like that last one. Yeah, I, I do I would too. use it too. I know, right? <laughs> and so with all this information and advice and all of this, if you were to cram in just one single book, what would you what would you call the title and why? Man, what would I call the title of this book? Well, I had a title that I can't remember, but it was great. And you, you made me think that I'm going to go back and look at my notes just for the future reference. But this is something that I've always um, told myself. And as a parent, I've always told my kids. And I think it's very powerful. It's simple. It's two words. You belong. I love that because I would I would write this book with that title, You Belong, and the whole thread, the ribbon of the book would somehow send the message that no matter what you are thinking, no matter what someone else thinks about you or what you perceive their feeling is about you, you belong. Don't let anyone um, take away Whatever it is, that drive, that determination, that desire to be what you want to be or, or go where you want to go because of what they think. And I say all of this to say, in a very good way, I, a one fun story or quick story, when I did decide to be a journalist or tell my mother I was going to be a journalist when I was in high school, um, my mother was an English teacher at a high school in California in Los Angeles, Washington Prep High School, and she said, my mother was, still to this day, is extremely supportive of my career, always has been. But when I told her, I said, Ma, I think I know what I want to do. I want to be an anchor or a reporter. And she goes, oh, okay. She said, well, um, that's great. But you know what, perhaps you want to think about like a backup plan. You know, you want to think about <laughs> like something else, just in case, you know, just in case, right? And I forgot about this story, Jamie, until I got to be an adult and she reminded me of it because she used it as a teaching uh, tool in her class. She said, I looked at her and I said, Mom, I don't need a backup plan because this is what I'm going to do. And she said, she sat back in her chair and she said, well, all right, okay, this is it. But I was so determined. And my mother didn't have any ill will. She was just being protective. She just didn't want me to fail. You know what I mean? She didn't want me to mess, mess up or, you know, not have anything to fall back on. I get that because now I'm a mother and it's just a natural instinct to want to protect and coddle and make sure there's no bumps and bruises. But I was so, for my mother, she said, I was so determined because I knew that I belonged here. I knew that I belonged in this seat with you on Channel 7, Channel 9, every step along my career. I knew that I belonged there, that nothing nor anyone, even my mother's hesitancy at that time, could deter me from pursuing my goal and pursuing my dream of being a, what well, that time I thought it was just going to be a journalist who knew that I was going to be a talk show host as well. That's God. <laughs> You belong. I hope everybody here and who's watching understands that you belong. Yes. <laughs> so don't touch that um, remote, I guess. And we'll be right back. It's 
gross. I don't really want to talk about it. She didn't want to at first, but I mean, it's no big deal. Everybody does it. I was ready. Totally ready. Because we have been practicing this dance for weeks. He was supposed to take this girl to this dance, but... <laughs> <laughs> I sprained my ankle at track practice. I hate sharing anything personal. It's so disgusting. For the dance, I let her wear my shoes and she hated it, but I thought she looked great in them. He could barely even walk. I ended up taking some pills for my pain. Yeah, they were my mom's, but it didn't go well. If it's not yours. If it's not yours. If it's not yours. Hey, you. Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. You won't believe what happened next. Welcome back. And yes, I have with me the amazing Val Warner. And may I ask you about maybe two more questions sure. before we end this? So, what are some, what were the biggest challenges of you wanting to be a journalist? And what were the biggest rewards in return? Okay. Well, Jamie, I would say one challenge that I think I faced early on in my career was separation. And by that, I mean, I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, my, my parents were very supportive of me. My father passed away when I was a senior in college, so he just got, you know, stayed as long as he could to, um, he missed me graduating from college. He had cancer. He got diagnosed when he, I was a freshman in college, and so he lived to my fall semester of my senior year. But I grew up in um, L.A., and that was a big, big city, right? And all my friends were there, my church family, my family was there. In this business, you, there, the risk that you have to take, or you have to leave, is there no way I was going to graduate college and go right into the number two market in the country and be on TV? I understood that I was going to have to get my feet wet, that I was going to have to learn the business in a smaller market. So that was challenging initially to pack up my bags, load up my Honda Civic back in the day with all of my stuff and hit the road and drive to Roswell, New Mexico, wow. a town that I never even heard of, A, B, never been to. And I took the job based on an interview. I sent a resume tape in on a Tuesday. The news director got it. I overnighted. He got it on a Tuesday. He interviewed me on a Thursday, offered me the job over the phone, and I accepted it. So that was challenging. Like my, my home, my life, every, everything I knew and was comfortable with was in L.A. My best friends. You know how hard it is to leave your best friends and start off and go someplace by yourself? So um, that was challenging. And it, I think in the, in another thing in the business, but this is just in general in any career or life choice you make, you're going to find that you're going to run into and work with a lot of different personalities. That can be very challenging. Um, when you are a kid, you know, my daughter, I have a daughter at a uh, freshman at Howard University right now, and she is learning some of the things that I've tried to teach her that the world is not going to coddle you. They're not going to look out for you the same way mommy looks out for you. So you're going to have to be a little tough. So, um, Another challenging thing about our career in, in that same vein is that when you put yourself out there and are open to the public, that means that you also have to be open to the criticism. It's not going to always be praise and accolades. So it's tough to sometimes hear. And nowadays, in the world of social media, where everyone has a platform and everyone has a voice, it's even tougher to kind of digest yeah. the things that people are saying to you. Rewards? I could go on all day for, about rewards. It, it's a blessing to be able, for me right now in my position at Windy City Live, we have a stage and a platform to be able to make a difference in people's lives from something as simple as making them smile or laugh during host chat to highlighting a Chicagoan or somebody from Gary, Indiana, who has done something amazing in their community and they're making a difference in the world and to highlight them and introduce them to other people so that they can get the recognition that they deserve to learn new things. That's one of the beautiful things about my job now is that I've learned so much over the last 10 years and I consider that a reward because I'm growing and then I'm also also having the opportunity to make sure other people are growing with us. There's lots of perks and accolades and all that good stuff that, that comes with the job. I love the idea of being able, I'm a mom first, Jamie, so I have two kids and I've up until 
recently I've been a single mom for a long time, about 10, 11 years. And um, so it's been me and my kids, but I needed a work schedule or a job that was very flexible and allowed me to be at my kids' games, to make sure that I can get them to their practices, to make sure that I'm at parent-teacher conference night because I'm a very hands-on, probably too hands-on uh, of a mom. So that's been one of the rewards of getting to where I am now in my career is that I can work a job where I can still be great at my job, but also be great as a mom because I don't want to sacrifice one for the other. Yeah, there's been some ups and there have been some downs, but those ups definitely take you to where you are now. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. And so with the two children, their names Zoe and Max, right? How did you know? You've done your research. <laughs> <laughs> Going deeper into what you said about them, okay. has it been hard being a journalist and a talk show host and then trying to balance being a mother being there for their practices their games yeah. just being there for your family it has been it has been jim you about to make me cry <laughs> <laughs> it has been but um thank god for the village you know when my kids were younger i really um needed my help from my mother my mother has been very helpful my sister is also my whole family's here in chicago so that's one thing even though i grew up in la my family roots are here in chicago so for me growing up i would come back and visit my grandmother mother dear who passed away a few years ago and my uncle and my sister and everybody i lived here because we had such a small family but I got divorced uh, when my kids were very young. They were 10 months and five years old. So that was a big, tough, challenging decision, um, but it was a necessary one that I had to make. And with that, that threw me into single motherhood with, I, at that time, I was having to be at work at three o'clock in the morning. So my mother had to step up and really help me with the kids, but I was, I couldn't get them to school every morning, but I sure was there after school to make sure I picked them up, to get them to their practices, dinner in the bed and repeat and rewind. Um, the good thing is I have two pretty cool kids who don't give me too much problems. So they've really understood and they've seen the sacrifices that have to be made. And they see that, you know, mommy has to do a lot. And so they are patient with me. And um, I'm really proud of the human beings that they have become because um, it's been tough sometimes when you have to be the disciplinarian, but be the the one who has fun with them and hugs them and kisses them and lets them know that this is a safe zone and I'm always here for you and no matter what, you guys are number one in my life. But yeah, the the, the benefit, the ups have definitely outweighed the downs. Yes, 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 they definitely have. <laughs> they, de <laughs> they definitely have. So Ms. Val Warner, we really appreciate you. On, on behalf of the Asir Foundation Future Leaders Program and WSTG TV, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come talk to us. Well, I appreciate you having me, Jamie, and you have done such a fantastic job with this interview. So Thank you. Kudos to you. I recommend you submit this for an Emmy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for tuning. Thank you for tuning in at Westside Theater Guild TV. I'll see you soon. My friends I wanted to become an astronaut, they laughed and called me a space cadet. Fortunately, my parents took me seriously. They enrolled me in Gary Community Schools where I had STEM summer camp, dual credit classes, and certified teachers. Now, I'm a Lily Scholar and my folks are all over the moon. Gary Schools. Strong. Resilient. Built for education. My name is Dr. Paige McNulty. I'm the manager for the Gary Community School Corporation, and I am pleased to be joined today with the Jackson 5 family members, Tito and Marlon Jackson. Hi, Hi how nice are you? Thanks with for nice being to here see today. You again. Not only are we members of this world famous Jackson 5, but we are proud products of the Gary Schools. 
Growing up in Gary, our school system afforded great opportunities from academics to extracurricular activities. And today is no different. This is why we encourage you to enroll your child in the Gary schools today. For more information, please call 219-881-5466 or visit GarySchools.org. And please remember, enroll in Gary Schools today. Yes, right. definitely right. enroll. Gary Schools. Strong. Resilient. Built for education. Education.